process is pretty much the same all over like globally although in america yes you have uh sales agents which i'll explain so yeah the client will have an advertising agency and some clients are in-house they'll have their own but that's not very common so they'll have an advertising agency who strategize you know work out who they want to target and strategically how they want to what's the messaging the creative department will then take that strategy and and write scripts that that capture that idea and help hopefully market the the product which they'll pitch to their clients the clients will agree one and go right we're going to make that and then the agency will look at all the directors that they have at their disposal at the various production companies and in america the sales reps work for the production companies as the second as third party companies and they go out and show the showreels of the directors to the various agencies knowing what they're working on and saying oh have you seen this person that might be a good fit for for that if you're going more in a comedy direction or more in a surreal direction like these directors uh, maybe should be on your radar and that happens all the time you know across the across the the world they'll then th pick three directors the creatives at the advertising agency pick three directors that they think best fit the brief based on the show reels now it's always frustrating because there's this classic conundrum of well we want to see the work on the reel <laughs> you know and obviously you might not have the work on the reel or because no one's made it yet or you haven't had a chance but you know good creatives open-minded ones will look for skill set in the reel they'll go well look they can work with actors or they they know how to make cars look good or they you know because they they work with the right sort of dps and they communicate the right ideas and you know so they're looking good, good creatives will look at the reel as a whole and see your strengths and go if you put all that together we reckon they could do a good job on this script which isn't represented on their reel in one film um but sometimes they're they're quite um narrow in their thinking and they want to see you know the piece of work on the reel already um and that's maybe just because they've got to sell you as a director to their client. They've got to go back and say, right, these are the three directors that we're going to ask to do a treatment and a budget for, for your script. And if the client looks at those showreels and goes, well, I don't see any comedy and whatever on there, then, you know what I mean? They could end up going to have to find a new person. So I do get there is a, a, a challenge for the creatives there. They've got to have trust in their clients. They've got to trust them. And when that when that's there and the creatives are open minded, it's it's really great because you then get a chance to work on something different. Um, so then you write a treatment, you you get approved to pitch. Right, great, you're on the pitch of three different directors. You then do a, you do a conference call with them first. So you all sit on one of these and go, cool, tell me about your idea and how did you come up with it and okay and is it and then you just ask some questions. You know, you it's an ex it's an exploratory chemistry call really you you sort of want them to know that you're open-minded and collaborative and you also want to give them a taste of some of the ideas you've maybe had you know you, you get these scripts and you usually at least for me there's like two or three things that will immediately come to my mind i'm like okay i, I don't like that I, I want to change it to this i do like that but i want to add that and whatever um and sometimes you're like Oh God, I really need, I really want to completely rewrite this because I, I get what they're trying to do and I love the strategy and the line, but I just don't buy the, the actual script, you know. And then that call is the place where you can put the feelers out. How open are you to changing this? Like, how much scope have we got? Could it be a woman instead of a man in the driver's seat? You know, I've had that many times. Could it be this? Could it be that? Uh, I was thinking, uh, I like that idea, but did you ever think about doing that? You know, and you just see their reaction you know and of course you this is something you really learn and and i think in america especially the the conference call is is really important um because it's a it, it, it's where they're going to pretty much decide whether they think they can they like what you're saying and they can work with you um i'm not saying it's where you win the job but you can certainly lose the job on the call because you you might you know not get the signals that they like what you're saying, but they will never get it sold back to their client. So stop pushing it, you know. So that you've got to be very sort of political as well. You've got to read like on those calls. You've really got to just take it softly and and listen to their reaction. 
and obviously reactions can be misleading so you don't someone could be like yeah great and then actually you you lose a job and you find out they didn't like you like, well, said yeah great on the call so you never know where you really stand um but that's the intention anyway. that's the idea from that course you want to come away with giving them enough ideas that they are excited but not giving them everything um and just working out what it is you can get away with in changing the script um and then you go and write a treatment um which i can send you some examples um which is a document you know from anything from like 15 20 to oh, god knows 60 pages sometimes uh of visuals and text thousands of words describing every element of of your take on that script what you want to 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 do with it and importantly selling them on your ideas so making the argument and the case for why for what what's good about what they've got but what what can be done to it to make it even better and and how and why so it's a marketing job really you know if you just wrote this is the idea you know that's not the best way of getting them on board you need to sort of strategically plant the seeds in the treatment so that when they get to reading the script like later in the treatment which is exactly what you know shot by shot everything's making sense they're not going why are we showing a, that half black what they go oh this is the thing he was describing earlier in looser terms that's the shot he was talking about oh that's cool you know so it's got to do that it's got to have a journey in itself that treatment um, and the imagery is really important it's got to represent what you think it should look like um, and then alongside that is the budget which is you know the most important thing really because you know there's no point you giving a treatment in that you can't afford to make because then you're really going to look stupid when you get given the job and you can't do it um, so the producer and you have to work together in you know compromising really going well how can we do that how can we create that effect how can we do that we don't have the money for motion control we don't have the money for huge set build we don't have the money for those stunt stunt vehicles like how can we do that okay okay well we'll just be inside the car for longer and be more or whatever you know and, and you have to work together to come up with solutions that are creative ones and that that feeds the budget and also back to the treatment because they might go listen mark you've got a helicopter shock here we, we definitely can't afford a helicopter you've got to change that <laughs> so, so yeah right. and then yeah you finish that and that goes into the agency and then you wait to see if you're the favorite or not <laughs> the, the more you create a place for everybody to be heard even if you know when they're speaking this is the worst idea I've ever heard i'm never going to do that <laughs> um but they, at least they feel listened to and the way you kind of combat it is not like no i'm not doing that that's a crazy idea or why would i you know that's never going to bring out the best in the people that are ultimately having to sign off your next shot <laughs> um, or the people that you ultimately want to be on your side when you go to them with an idea and you know, listen, can we talk to the client about this? You know, if you've listened to them all the way, then they're going to listen to you and go, yeah, well, let, let, leave it with us. We'll, we'll, we'll drop the hint and we'll try and get the client on, you know. So I think recognizing that, especially as a director, like egos are everywhere and you need to look after them and that's even including your own crew of course your actors i mean the actors are the obvious one because if you if you upset your if you know if you actor if you laugh at your actor in the wrong way they're going to feel insecure and then their performance is going to go off a cliff but your own crew as well you know they're all responding to you and the atmosphere that you're creating and if you're having a nice time and enjoying it and or uh, and like ex explaining when you're happy and telling them like that was great then they're all going to feel happy and like they're doing a good job and therefore that just ripples out and and creates a better atmosphere for everybody um it's so easy and i've seen this it's so easy to burst that balloon one false statement or wrong move and you know you you say the wrong thing and you or you lose your cool and it it, it really quickly like just like if that filters into the to the rest of the team um so yeah it, it it's important from the creative agency side of you just to keep them feeling listened to and it's important for your crew so that they're all happy and on top you know and also ultimately giving their their best you know it is i think you really see the 
you see the benefits of that immediately because because crew are often you know as a, they're working with different directors every week right because they're busy crew and they're working most days so they see way more directors and behavior than you do as a director and when you're nice and you're really trying to foster this lovely atmosphere more often than not they will comment on it and they'll all be like that was a really great shoot thank you and you realize like oh, okay so not everybody is doing that you know not that they wouldn't say thank you but you, you just know um and i, and I, I just think that you, you you're gonna get a better result in a selfish way you're gonna get a better result by being nice and in a in a, in a just happiness way for yourself if you go away knowing for a fact that everyone had a nice time can't help but make you feel better about uh, about everything um I, I remember one time i i lost my cool on a job something wasn't working or whatever and i got annoyed and i, I was just like venting i wasn't swearing like crazy or anything i was venting and my dp just turned to me and went marky no one died like you know like and it just sort of like immediately like grounded me back like, oh yeah what my like of course like you know it's just, <laughs> moaning about it isn't going to change anything so all it's going to do is make other people go oh shit mark's in a really like bad mood i better stay you know <laughs> and you need people around you like that sometimes to just because it's a lot of pressure and you can easily lose your cool it's not you don't even need to be a dick you can just be having a bad moment in a bad day and let yourself down but you need people around you that that will do that for you and 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 vps for, for directors are the uh, aside from producers you know they're the people you can choose them so you for the most part get to select the dp so don't so why would you choose someone that you know is an arrogant person or a grumpy person or you know and they might be amazing but you're really taking that on you're going you've got someone amazing but they're really grumpy so people are going to be feeling that and that's a choice you can make and avoid that if you if you want and i certainly am one of those people i i just want nice people everywhere i want good talented people but nice and warm and smiley people is like because it, it transforms the set and everyone benefits so yeah don't underestimate that <laughs> <laughs>